which happens to be my favorite training day of the week. It's the body part I need to bring up most, so it's a session that I obsess over. I'm not quite sure what came first, the chicken or the egg, but we're gonna get down there and get fired up. In the last video, I kind of broke down what I do here for my intro setup and my pre-workout. You guys know what we do. Let's just get down and train. Thank you, Fuad. Summer. Appreciate it. A constant reminder to all of us, myself included, but the members, don't let any sacrifice or adversity stand in the way. Set of all three movements for three sets. No working sets, just purely a warm up. deadlifting today. He's doing more than me, so now I have to beat him up. The rules. De deadlift more than me in my house. <laughs> it's back day. It is my personal favorite day. My personal favorite training day. It is what I need to improve the most. You have to obsess over the things you want to progress. It truly has to be that way. So today's Monday. It's my first training day of the week, so I start off with a bang. I start off with what I need most, and I give it hell. So, we're gonna start right here. We're gonna do some pullovers. One of my favorite machines is this old Nautilus pullover machine. You guys have obviously seen Dorian using this machine. It's a different version of it, but either way, same principle. Okay, get fired up here, and then we're gonna get into some deadlifts. Big 
15 deep breaths, another failure set.
full of Libra Rita. That's one thing I noticed about the last video is that I'm a, I'm a fuck, I'm, I'm a potty mouth. So, for my own image, I should probably try to. shoes off when I deadlift. I just feel that much more grounded, that much more connected, and I'm closer to the floor. But either way, I'm able to drive through my feet better. I don't feel wobbly in my shoes. All in all, I think it's much better to pull in your socks.
I was just chastised by my plumber. And I don't look in the lens. I'm not connecting with my people. I drift up and I look at him. It's a good looking guy, it's easy to do. But I'm here for you guys. So now you guys have my undivided attention. to lay down, but rest the low back. So we're not gonna do any spinal loading on this movement. The next move will be a spinal loading movement, but right now we're giving our low back some rest and doing these seal rows. And right here, this is because we're short. We have short arms. Can't pick them up off the ground. So the point of this movement, is to try to spread these dumbbells as far apart at the top and contract hard in the mid back. So we're aiming for our mid back rhomboids, low traps. set here, aim for a set of 12 reps to failure. And you're gonna see me pausing in that lengthened position. I'm gonna make sure to really open up that scapula and hang out in that stretched position. So I wanna initiate each pull from a fully stretched position. So I'm gonna come, come all the way down, stretch, and then row. And at the top, I'm gonna try to spread these things as far apart as possible and really drive the elbows behind me into my mid upper back.
These seal rows are fantastic to mitigate any momentum. You can't do anything except row. Your chest is married to the pad like that. It makes it very difficult. Done here. We weren't doing any spinal loading there. That was to give ourselves a break from the deadlifts. Now we're gonna do some bent over barbell rows. Why am I talking like that? I can't say my fucking arse. Bent over barbell rows in the Smith machine. That's all I guess from Boston fucking bar barbell rows. <laughs> <laughs> more of a lat bias row. My hands are gonna be in a little closer, my elbows are gonna be in tight, and I'm gonna be driving my elbows deep into the lats, pulling that bar right into my belly button. I will say, however, any bent over barbell movement, in my opinion, is gonna be a full back movement. It's gonna load the low back, I'm gonna hammer the lats, and inevitably, I'm gonna feel that in my mid back. So, I think this is a great movement for your entire back. Point of the box is to elevate us off the ground because this thing bottoms out here. If I were doing it from the floor, I would hit the bottom of the rack in every rep. So this elevates us to make sure we can get a full stretch on each rep without bottoming out. We are transitioning from barbell rows, Smith machine rows, into lat pull downs. So I say lat pull downs. So we're actually gonna be hitting our lats, which means we're not gonna be leaning back and pulling into our mid back. We're gonna stay upright, we're gonna drive our elbows down into the lats. This is a neutral grip handle. I really like this handle, just for the alignment, be able to draw right down into the hip, drop the elbow into the hip, and squeeze the lats. A really good lat biased pull down. If you notice where my knees are at, I'm not all the way up. I'm sat back a little bit. He's got little legs. I have slightly less little legs. total for the whole set. So, and another thing you'll notice here is that on these negatives, 
I'm getting a full stretch on my lats, but I'm not disengaging into the shoulders. The range of motion for the lat is actually pretty short. If you go underhand and you lift your arm up, that's about it. And in order to get more range of motion than that, I have to disengage the lat and go into my shoulder joint. So at the top of the movement, shoulders compressed, lats are fully stretched here. You don't have to do this. This isn't stretching your lats. This is releasing tension off your lats. Important. 
but try to do things right and then increase the load. So if there's any takeaway from today, hopefully it's that. And hopefully you guys learned some things. And I said this once, I'll say it again. Life is too short to be small.